In this video, we want to do some true-false questions about limits of functions. True-false questions can be tricky and are often some of the most difficult questions for the students. The first statement is limit of x approaches 3 of the expression 2x over x minus 3 minus 6 over x minus 3 is equal to limit of 2x over x minus 3 minus limit of 6 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3. We have to figure out, can we write this limit as a limit of the first part of the expression minus second part of the expression? Can we split a limit and write it as limit of the first part minus limit of the second part or not? Remember that, in general, we can write limit of f of x minus g of x. We can consider this as f of x and this as g of x. We can write, in general, limit of f of x minus g of x as x approaches a, as a limit of f of x minus limit of g of x. But we can do this, we can write limit of f minus g as limit of f minus limit of g only when both of these limits, limit of f of x as x approaches a and limit of g of x as x approaches a exist. Otherwise, this relation is not correct and we cannot write limit of f minus g as limit of f minus limit of g. So, here this statement, this given statement, is true if limit of this expression and limit of this expression exist. So, let's see what is this limit and what is this limit. Limit of 2x over x minus 3 as x approaches 3 does not exist because as x approaches 3 numerator of this limit approaches 6 and denominator of this limit if we plug in 3 approaches 0 and when we have a non-zero over something that approaches 0 the limit does not exist because it gets a non-zero term in numerator and denominator approaches zero and in this case we know that in general limit does not exist or we can say the limit goes to infinity or negative infinity in similar way the other limit doesn't exist if we plug in 3 for x here we have 6 over 3 minus 3 and because we have a non-zero over zero, the limit does not exist. So finally, this statement is true or not? This statement is false. Because we can separate a limit to two limits only if each of the limits, each of these limits exist. But here we showed that these limits does not exist. So this statement is false. Compare this example with this one. Limit of x approaches 2 of x over x minus 1. Minus x2 can be written as limit of x over x minus 1 minus limit of x2 as x approaches 2. What about this statement? Is this statement true or not? Again, to figure out this statement is true or not, we have to check to see if these limits exist or not. The first limit, limit of x over x minus 1 
as x approaches 2 is 2 over 2 minus 1. We can simply plug in 2 for x. The limit of numerator, limit of x as x approaches 2 is 2. And limit of denominator as x approaches 2 is 2 minus 1 or 1. 2 over 1 is 2. So the first limit exists. Limit of x squared as x approaches 2 is 2 squared. If we plug in 2 for x, we have 2 squared, which is 4. So the second limit also exists. And because both of these limits exist based on this rule that we have for limits in general, this statement is true. Let's do another example. Limit of x approaches 2 of x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared plus 3x minus 10 is equal to limit of x approaches to a numerator over limit of x approaches to of x2 plus 3x minus 10 denominator. Is this a statement true or not? Let me remind you a rule of limits. In general, limit of f of x, any expression like this, over g of x, any other expression, as x approaches a is equal to limit of f of x as x approaches a over limit of g of x as x approaches a. But there is a condition that this rule is true. We can write limit of f of x over g of x as limit of f of x over limit of g of x only if both of these limits, limit of the top and limit of the bottom, exist and also limit of denominator be not equal zero. So, limit of numerator, limit of denominator must exist and also limit of denominator must be not equal zero. Then we can use this relation. Otherwise, this is not correct. In our example, in this statement, limit of numerator exists. It is obvious that this limit exists because if we plug in 2 for x here and here, we get 2 squared, 4 plus 2, 6 plus 2, 6 minus 6 is 0. So the limit in the numerator exists. Limit of the expression in denominator also exists. Let me write these here to make it more clear for you. Limit of numerator separately, limit of this expression is 0. Just plug in 2 and you can see that the limit is 0. The limit of the expression in the denominator also exists. If we plug in 2 for x, we get 4 plus 6 minus 10, which is 0. So these two conditions are satisfied here. But what about this condition? The limit of the expression in denominator must be not equal to 0. But here, the limit of the expression in denominator is zero. So we cannot write this limit as limit of the top over limit of the bottom. Which means that this given statement is false. Compare this example 
with this one. Limit x approaches 5 2x2 plus x minus 10 over 6 minus x equals to limit of 2x2 plus x minus 10 as x approaches 5 over limit of x approaches 5 of 6 minus x. This statement is true because this limit exists. If you plug in 5 for x, easily you can check that the limit exists. If you plug in this 5 here, also you can see that the limit exists. And the other thing that you have to check is that the limit of this expression is not 0. If you plug in 5, you get 6 minus 5, which is 1, not 0. So this statement is true. But in the expression given here, in this statement, the problem was that the limit of the denominator was 0. And if the limit of the denominator is 0, we cannot use this rule. And so the statement was false. Let's do another example. The expression x2 minus 4x over x minus 4 is equal to x. Is this a statement true or false? If you look at the expression in numerator, you can see that between x2 and 4x, x is common. So we can factor x in the expression in numerator. And we can write it as x minus 4 over x minus 4. If you factor x from numerator, from x to x remains, and from 4x, 4 remains. Now, if we cancel x minus 4 from numerator with the expression x minus 4 in denominator, we get x. So, the statement is not to be careful. It seems that the expression, the statement, is true. It seems that this expression is the same as this expression because we simplify this expression and we get to the other expression. But why these two state, why these two expressions are not equal? It seems that they are equal, but no, they are not equal. The problem is in their domains. The thing that we missed here is the domain. We didn't consider the domain of these expressions. The domain of the expression in the left, the domain of this expression or this expression, is all real numbers, the domain of this expression, or actually the domain of this expression, is all real numbers, every number is in the domain of this expression. But we know that the numbers that make denominator 0 are not in the domain. So 4 is not in the domain of the expression in the left. 4 is not in the domain. But for the expression in the right, the domain is all reals because the expression in the right has no denominator. And the difference here is the domain of the two expressions. Domain of the left is all reals minus 4. Domain of the right is all reals. So the two expressions are not equal. Two expressions are equal if they will be equal for all values. And also the domain of them should be the same. You have to be careful about this. So when we cancel expression from the top and expression from the bottom, it is possible that the domain changes. And so the two expressions are not always the same. I know, in algebra, we do these simplifications. And sometimes we forget to attention to the domains. But here, because it is a true-false question, you, you have to be so careful about these tricks. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and see you in the next videos.